Hi Lebo. Hi. Welcome to the horse's mouth. Thank you. I'm super excited because you are our first guest and I wouldn't have heard it any other way because you're thank you. You're amazing and I love your story. Okay. I love your resilience. <laughs> I love how I God. Keep yeah, <laughs> I love how far God has led you. Thank you. And I believe you're an inspiration for a lot of young ladies who'd want to follow your path or who have been in your path. Mm. Yeah. So mm. yes. Um. Today we're just going to be discussing about your life. We'll okay. be zooming into your life. Mm. And thank you so much for allowing us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I was not supposed to be on the video, but he said that feels much more comfortable when I'm closer. Yes, I want you to discuss um, your dating life, <laughs> how you started, because we're going to be discussing everything about you. Okay. Yeah. All right. I do not have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. feel it. All right. Oh. Um... No, you're starting to carry your whole body like. Yeah. Dating in the church, how has it been? I started dating when I was in Form 2. Um, yeah, that was my first boyfriend. I thought we were going to get married. Because I've always loved love, first of all. I've always loved the idea of marriage and just what it is. And so I, I had my first boyfriend in Form 2. And then we broke up. And from 3, I started dating another guy guy in form four yes what form i remember four. your exact words at form four when i met you just like i just want to die on arms like i was like whoa this girl is deep <laughs> she wants to die in someone's arms when i love i love when she loves she goes I love, crazy i love yeah I yeah yeah it. you don't like it <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine. Yes, so oh. the first guy I ever dated in the church, that was in Form 4. In the church? Yeah, that was in Form 4. Um, we met in the church and we had, like, I think that was my first real relationship. Yeah. Um, we dated for two years and then we broke up. We broke up because I was growing in the faith and he was pretty much going backward in terms of faith and so we were not connecting on that level i just felt like we wanted different lives on, spirit, on a spiritual level on a spiritual level when but I'm any other level you're fine uh there was distance also so he pretty much was just getting pulled out of the relationship as well in that way okay yes all right yeah and then we went to ub when we got to UB, my first boyfriend was not Adventist. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say, I don't have a problem with dating non-Adventists. That was back then. That was back then. Like, people who are not of the same faith as me. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't see, like, a reason to have a problem with it. I just thought, look, if he is a good person, then, you know, we can relate we can be together yeah. so he was an adventist and you know our principles they didn't match he was like nope uh i want to have sex and then i was like nope i don't want to have sex and so we broke up and then i met another guy in the church i met a guy in the church and we became really close boyfriend and girlfriend we became boyfriend and girlfriend yeah and yeah, it was a strict relationship, so to say. Yeah. Principled. Highly principled. Principled relationships, Maybe. which means no kissing, no sex, no nothing. And isn't that what you always wanted? That is what I thought I'd always wanted so, at that point. Okay. And so when I got into the relationship, I think that's what I was seeking because dating people who were not of the same faith and of the same principles, it just lacked you know it we d we weren't connecting on a spiritual level we we're not just connecting they okay, wanted no, different when, things okay when you say that's what you thought you wanted would yes. you say now it's different Definitely. in a relationship would you want sex and kissing and other things no i'm trying to understand for the sake of our viewers no um 
okay. Mm. You know, the thing is, I said that I thought I wanted a principled relationship back then. Mm -hmm. Back then, I just... Fine, I was a Christian, but... You know, I wanted to have fun. Yeah. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to experience mm -hmm. the whole relationship, you know, because it was with... In that strict relationship, there was no kissing, no hugging. Like, it was just... Like, yes. I'm with my brother, you know? It was that strict. The relationships in church where, you know, you can relate nicely. And he was a bit older. I don't know if that also contributed, you know, but that that relationship just wasn't working. Okay. From there, from the principled guy? From the strict, principled relationship, I got into uh, a phase where I was single. Now, in the single phase, um, it was very short. <laughs> It was yeah. very short and yeah. I had like all these guys, yeah. you know, coming in and different guys for that matter. Some in church, some not in church. And I was like, okay, no. Lot. I was like, okay, that one I know what, that one I know what, okay. The, but then I ended up meeting someone who I really liked and we ended up getting into a relationship. He was in the church and he was a <laughs> he was a nice person he was a uh, he was a pastor <laughs> he was a pastor in the church and we ended up getting together into a relationship and you know it was just like any other relationship except we said okay no sex before marriage and all of that you know and it was a fun relationship for a while and then distance came in and then a whole bunch of issues came in which i didn't know about and going on into other relationships um i just found out that when it comes to dating and relationships like getting into a relationship when you date somebody the thing is the world has a different perspective on what dating is when you date, you really get to know the person. You get to know who a person is mm -hmm. so that you know whether you want to date them, whether you want to get into a relationship with them. Because mostly what happens is you meet someone, you like them, and you're like, yes, that's my boo, that's my boyfriend. You know, you don't give yourself time to get to know them in their personal life, in a social setting, and all of that, like get to know them, you know what I mean? And then make a decision, okay, yeah, I think this is somebody that I want to be with. Mm -hmm. So with most of my relationships, him included, I met him and I was like, oh, potential. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, potential, and it was like, I got in there and it wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. After dating the pastor guy, what happened? Ooh, after dating the pastor guy, I was like, and he remember? broke my heart. Yeah, he did. He broke my heart in that it wasn't a good relationship. Yeah, you know, it wasn't. And my friend over here was like, mm -mm, no, <laughs> no. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We were both young and you know. It just wasn't working. But anyway, so from there, I went on to date a good guy. Yeah. I went on to date a good guy who was not Adventist. Yeah. And he was a good guy. And I was like, at that point, I was convinced that, no, this can work. Because he was a good guy. You know, really he, good guy. Yeah. Good manners, good character. I know him. Okay. Bottom line, he was not a Christian. Yeah. He was not Adventist. Yeah. We couldn't work out. You're not relating on a spiritual level. We're not. And yeah. that is the most important part mm. in anything, yeah. you know, to have that God factor in everything. And so with a relationship, it was really important that there be that God factor. Yeah. Yeah. We, so it did not work out. The thing with me is I would get into a relationship and I was like, okay, no, he's a good guy, this person, this one. But... <laughs> yeah. But um, at the end of it, I know myself. I know that I'm gonna turn back to God 
you know, I always return. I always go back. Yeah. I always do. And no, it's not, not fair on them to some yeah, extent because exactly. I know who I am. Yet I get into these relationships and... Mm. It, no, that's deep. <laughs> And you know we end up not working so and of breaking course, their hearts now. breaking their hearts because when we enter into the relationship where not like you know what i'm not i'm a yeah. child of god yeah. i'm principled but now i've just maybe gone back a little mm. bit and let me just mm-hmm. enjoy myself a little mm-hmm. bit now mm-hmm. and someone is getting into the relationship full force yeah yeah, yeah. so christian girls out there mm. stop breaking hearts yeah i've done that Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. not right. It's not. Mm. It's not. Um and so you broke we up. broke up. <laughs> yeah. We broke up and mm. then at that point um I got into another relationship yeah. which again he was not Adventist. He was not Adventist and he told me he was a Christian. And I was like, Well, he's a Christian. Yes. You know, yeah. he's a Christian. Maybe you know this can work. Um, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, because he was not of the same faith. He was not of the same principles as I had. We are one big church. We do worship the same God, but the truth of the matter is, we have different teachings. We have different. Um, Principles. Principles. Can you just we, talk have, about we have different um, yeah. interpretations of the word of God, and yeah. that is why we have different churches. For someone who, who wants to understand clearly that they're, they're watching this and they're thinking, but you know, um, talk about your faith, what you believe in. That would be so different from what other okay. people believe in. Yeah. yeah. That of course maybe conflicts and yeah. arguments. And one one thing that that we had um, a conflict or disagreement with is the um, the seventh day sabbath Mm -hmm. yes um they worshiped on sunday and we worship on the seventh day friday sunset saturday sunset so they did not want to understand what that was about and you know it caused a lot of disagreements and yeah. the thing with me is I've always wanted to have an Adventist home mm. I've always wanted to go to church with my children and my husband like yeah. I want us to do everything together, together. and so I wanted to you know have that oneness in my home mm. and so us being different in that part you know it, it could never it made all the difference it did yeah it really did it was the issue of the sabbath okay yes and then you know music as well got into it like now you're growing in the faith you're growing yeah. back in the faith yeah 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 and they could see that yeah and they could see that and then they were like okay are you Who gonna break this? are you gonna break up with me like what's up with this all of a sudden i was like I'm not trying to break up with you. I'm just trying to tell you Come that this is who I am. Mm. You know, because when I met this person, I had told them. And they were like, no, I'm a Christian as well. You know, the thing is, we say Christian mm. girls, like, you should uh, be careful. You know, don't just go out there and marry people who... And be with people who are not of the same faith. At the same time, you go to those people. And then they will want to lure you and say, no, I'm also a Christian. You know, I I will let you do your thing, but the truth is, it just it's not going to be the same. Somewhere you're going to compromise. So I did not want that for me or for my children. So he saw that I was pulling back in terms of this whole relationship, where it was going, because now I was going back to my first love, which is God. And so at that point, I was like, look, I want to go back to church because I stopped going to church Mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. And I was telling him, look, I want to go back to church. I want to study the Bible. I want to know. I want because I had so much peace, so much fulfillment, joy in, you know, serving in the church, serving people in the community, sharing with somebody about God. So... Um, I had made up my mind that, you know what, yeah, I want to go back there. 
I, I thought to myself, it's best I break up with this person. It's best I break up with this person. Little did I know that I was actually pregnant at that point. <laughs> you were pregnant. I was pregnant. And you're only noticing that this is not the person that I want to yeah. be with, but now you're pregnant with that child. Yeah. Take us through the pregnancy piece. I I don't normally get my period like regularly back then. So I just felt like not nauseous, but there were smells which I didn't like. Even my boyfriend at that time, like he was, he mm -hmm. came over and was like, mm -mm, what are you putting on? What are you wearing? I didn't want, but I didn't think that I was pregnant. But then, you know, it continued for a while and I was like, okay, where's my period now? We got a <laughs> test, found out I was pregnant. Remember, this is way I had made up my mind that, you know what, maybe it's best we not Pause. continue the relationship. And so I find out that we are pregnant. I was like, this is what I said. <laughs> what the f And then like, he's just sitting there. And this was like at 5, 4 a.m. in the morning. Cause I was anxious. I had taken pregnancy tests before and they were always negative. I had given up. I was like, okay, I can't have kids, you know? And then this happened at this point in my Imagine. life. I I don't know. I always wanted a baby. I've always wanted a baby. I used to tell my dad that all the time. That I want a child. I want a child. You know. And then at that point it was happening. So confusing. But you know I accepted it. And I went along with it. I got another pregnancy test because I couldn't believe it. But anyway, and then I registered the whole thing and the pregnancy, I had a good pregnancy in terms of the physical part of it. There was no throwing up. There was nothing like that. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about my pregnancy was that I was alone. Mm. Yeah, I was alone. Mm. All right. Do you want to unpack that? I was alone. Mm -hmm. um, I, my boyfriend back then, he was living in another city yeah uh but besides the distance there was just no connection distance. between us there was distance even when we were together you know yeah. so <laughs> so uh, yeah that was that was the thing and you know during the pregnancy when it was going to the end of it i had such i had such a bad time i had such mm. a difficult time with business mm. with friendships you mm. know and but yeah but still you know god came through um i went on to deliver it was a very difficult delivery i was mm. in the hospital for a very long time yeah, talk about that the yeah. <laughs> yes yeah but my baby was born yeah i was hoping for a boy because we're all girls at home and then I got a baby girl. But the funny thing is, God gave me a name for a girl child. And so I only went to the hospital with the right. name of a girl child. Yeah. Even though I You're didn't know. For a boy. Yeah. Even though yeah. Even yeah. though I didn't know the gender. So I went there oh, my of course you did. You just refused to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, it says I, it's a girl, but I'm not a boy. I bought all boy things. You know, for me, mm -hmm. I just thought it was a boy, but my blessing, my answer, it yeah. came in a girl child, and I'm so grateful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Go on. Yeah. So my baby was born, and I was still in that relationship, um, but it ended soon after my mm -hmm. child was born. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask, why do people always break up after they have a child? when they have a child and one thing that i can say about that is for women women uh, are created submissive people mm -hmm. you know when you get into a relationship you submit to your partner mm -hmm. um i know that the world would be like nah i'm my own person nah, i'm my own this but the truth is you know men are the head of women and christ is the head of the yeah, men sure exactly sorry and so my attention my priority 
was my partner. It was all to him. And then when I had my child, it wasn't even about myself at that point. Yeah. When I had my child, it was about my child. He was second. My, my child was first. I was third, I guess, yeah. at that point. And so um, having that shift in perspective, it showed me that the relationship that I was in is not one which I would want to raise my child in. First of all, it's not good for me. And it's not good for her in that she would see two people who are not compatible, who are always having arguments, who are not connecting. And she would probably think, okay, maybe this is how a relationship is supposed to be. That was one thing that I really feared because the first time that we were together, the three of us in a room, it was an argument. There was an argument there. And, you know, that was, that was just our relationship, really, in a nutshell. It was disagreement after disagreement. There were more lows than there were highs. And so I had to make a decision that I actually put her first. Yeah. But then I realized, you know what, I'm also important. I also want to be loved in a certain type of way. Deserve you know, I deserve better. I deserve better. So that's what happened with that relationship. So like, someone would ask, yeah. I'm a woman, I'm in a relationship with those men, and we've been together for quite some time. We're pregnant, we're having a baby. Is it, but the relationship is not working. Maybe he's abusive, maybe he's this, maybe I'm this, because we're not always mm -hmm. the victim. Okay, true. So it's possible to leave a relationship after having a child with someone. Is it something that a woman out there watching could consider? I mean, as a woman, you would want to be with your partner and your child all the time. Like you were saying, you want to be holding hands and going to church together. So tell us about how, how hard is it? I mean, you've gone through yeah, yeah, yeah. quite some breakups in the past. So how hard is it to break up with <laughs> the father of your <laughs> child? And did you get any support? How, how did you make that decision? Because I'm sure it's a hard one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, generally, breaking up with a person it's is hard. so hard because I hate hurting people. I hate hurting people, you know, so it, 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 it really takes a lot. It took a while for me to break up with um, the father to my child, but it wasn't a difficult breakup. It wasn't a difficult breakup because I knew mm -hmm. that that is not what I wanted. Situations are different. Situations are different, you know, um, but if you have a child if you're pregnant and you're in a relationship where you know that you cannot grow spiritually you cannot grow yourself personally financially like you're being dragged down your esteem is being dragged down and you feel like I, it's best i just stay here you need to reconsider it could be best that you leave the relationship because I'm reading a book and it says that the heart of a society, the heart of our nation is a family. Mm. And the sad what part... What book is that, by Adventist Home. By? It's called Adventist Home. It's written by Ellen G. White. Okay. And the sad part about our families today is that our children are growing in toxic places, toxic homes where there's always argument after argument, where there's no peace, there's no love, there's no harmony. And the book, it just talks about how our children are going to be the future of societies. And imagine children like that being raised up in environments like that. What are they learning? And how is our society going to be then? Look how worse it is now. What about then when we're grooming children who are born in, who are raised in such toxic homes? Mm. So I didn't want that for my child. Rock solid. Okay, now we're going to talk about 
being a single mother, how has it been? Uh, first of all, motherhood. Motherhood is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. It's such a beautiful thing. Having a child is such a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for it. I praise Him. Um, being a single mother, I'm grateful for the journey that I'm walking in. It has been, I wouldn't say difficult because I've really just got into being a mother. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. um, I had support of my family, mm -hmm. my sisters mm -hmm. and my mother mm -hmm. and you know she was born when the lockdown was just about to come in. She was born in 2019, end of 2019 and so you know I was just with her the whole time and just raising her and just looking at this beautiful gift. Um, she'll be two in November, in a month, <laughs> two months. So I'm just very excited about what the rest of the journey has in store for me. Um, being, like not having somebody to help me with the child, with my baby. Sometimes I look at like my friend, like, you know, the husband would be there. Sometimes we're on a call and she'd be like, you know, yeah. take the baby, do this, do that. And I was like, whoa. I actually yeah, don't have that. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. all along it has just been me and I've been fine with it. Mm -hmm. And then now seeing that, you know, actually people have help, you know, it, it kind of rung a bell in me like, oh, okay. But one thing that yeah. I encourage with um, other mothers and with my situation is that I want my child to know her father and have a relationship with him that is very important to me and i believe that i have never given him any reason to doubt that yeah. he has full access to his child and mm -hmm. that is how i want to keep it yeah. and so i'm just so grateful for god having trusted me with this human and i'm grateful and i'm very happy you know, yeah. from what i gather from you you're someone who loves love loves being loved and from the Many relationships, sorry to put it that way. Multiple. From the multiple relationships that you've had in the past, it's like you've been looking and yearning for something. So tell us, now that you say you're single, are you happy? Oh my goodness. Are you okay? Mm. You've been dating all your life. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, you've been dating all your life from your teen. You've been dating Amy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been dating Amy. Yeah. So, how has it been? Would you have it any other way? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, you know, these other relationships were not necessary. They were not necessary that they happened. Being where I am now, gosh, there is so much peace. Mm. I find myself getting to know me mm. and loving me mm. and finding my purpose in this world because when I was with somebody it was always about I want to make them happy I want to do this I want to please them I want to do this I want to do that for them but now I'm getting to do everything for me you know I'm getting to put myself hmm. first and now I know what I don't want I know what I want I know what I deserve I know my worth and so I my absolutely appreciate mm. and encourage mm. this single phase where you get to know yourself, where you get to find out who you are in God. What is your purpose for being in this world? Wow. So are you looking forward to being in a relationship? Are you desperate for a relationship? Oh, Lord. Mm. You know, with singleness comes... Um, a lot of people, a lot of people when they know you're single or they think you're single, like they come up, pop up from everywhere and <laughs> and yeah. it's 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 not the nicest thing because you have people who just want you because they want to be physical with you, like they just want to have sex with you or it's just something so temporary. 
And so mm. having that single time, now you know what you're actually looking for. And when somebody like that comes along, you know that, okay, no, that is actually not what I want. So it's easy now. It becomes a lot easier to manipulate in this you know, relationship, in these dating streets. It becomes easier to navigate. And so I find myself you know, very happy. I'm very happy with where I am. I'm not looking to get into a relationship. Of course, I love love and, yeah. you know, I would want to be with somebody praying for um, a, pre- uh, a life partner, but um, the desperation is gone. Waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for that person who I will have that spiritual connection with, that Okay, with that being said, with. talk about what does Levohan's dream man partner <laughs> okay, look okay. like? What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would you want to know? He man? is tall, dark, and handsome. You want my man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I want an Adventist. Not only that, I want a God fearing. Adventist. Yeah, yeah. Because we have the folk in the church who have their names in the books of the church, but we don't know about their names in the book of life. So I want a God fearing person. Nobody's perfect, but if you have your mind set to yearning after spiritual things, after righteousness then that makes all the difference in who you are as a person and so that is what i want i want somebody who yearns after god's heart that's it that's really <laughs> most of it because when you do that everything else is covered you know but okay I mean, I do have, right? <laughs> you do have, yeah yeah um i want a vegetarian because are you vegetarian yourself can we come all the way down <laughs> sorry No, I said nobody is perfect. I want a vegetarian because I myself also want to become a full on vegan. Right? You desire the lifestyle. I do. Yeah. I love it because it's all about health. Yeah. It's all about giving our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. For it is our reasonable service. Christ gave us everything, He gave us life for us. There's a song which says the least we could do is to give ourselves as sacrifices for him. Mm -hmm. Not dying, but living, living sacrifices for God. And so, you know, when there were sacrifices in the Old Testament, like that sacrifice had to be healthy, no blemish, you know. And so imagine our bodies being the temple of God. He is the creator and he told us what to eat and what not to eat. And so with God being our creator, obviously, you know, a car manufacturer, they know what's supposed to go into the car, if it's diesel, if it's petrol, if it's this and that. And now us being such marvelous creation, God says, I've given you these plants to eat. I've given you this to eat. And then we go ahead and take in things into our bodies that God didn't intend for us to do, obviously, we're going to break down. And it's not going to be an immediate breakdown. We're going to suffer the consequences as we live along. And so for me, it's just about health and offering and being the best version of myself that I can be. And so that lifestyle of being a vegetarian, it just, it makes all the difference in health. God fearing vegetarian, I'm taking notes. Gentlemen, I hope you're taking notes. Okay. You guys can... Right. <laughs> kind, kind, responsible, responsible, mature, mature. Yes. Um, loves your daughter. Loves children. Yeah. Loves children and. Okay, the horse's mouth is officially coming to an end. The video. Okay. Today, so today's edition of the horse's mouth, which is our first, our debut. Yay. It's coming to an end. I want you to know that we've heard your story from your own lips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> from your own lips, um, can you please give advice? Do you want to stay into this camera, not that one, not that one? Because yeah, we have yeah, yeah. one camera, but 
You want to thank that camera and give advice to your big girl, Anaya. Alright. Yeah, so just talk to your baby about dating advice or whatever. Just anything that you want your daughter to know about. Yeah, we'll give you this time. So thank you, that camera. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> it's your mommy. Now, don't date. Don't talk to no boys, okay? None of that. We're all about God. That's what we used to be told. But anyway, my baby, if you need any advice, if you want to talk to anybody, you know that I'm always there. One thing that I will tell you is love yourself, know your worth, trust in God, and just live your best life. Mm -hmm. Live your best life. I love you. Wow. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Jenny. Thank you. I really, really appreciate uh, you. The sacrifices that you've made to come here and to do this for me, the support that you've given me in this channel is You're just overwhelming. <laughs> just when I was starting to just talk about opening a YouTube, starting a YouTube channel, you've always been supportive. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. I'll do anything for you. And one thing that I should mention is that I am talking to somebody. I am not available, so please. Oh, okay, I'm <laughs> No, please. 